Another key characteristic of Obama's speeches is that he frequently does not spare his own supporters. For example, in the speech on race in America, he states, And it means also taking re full responsibility for our own lives by demanding more from our fathers and spending more time with our children and reading to them. And regarding progressive, secular America? So our failure as progressives to tap into mo the moral underpinnings of the nation is not just rhetorical, though. Our fear of getting preachy may also lead us to discount the role that values and culture play in some of our most urgent social problems. And regarding relations with the Muslim world. More recently, tension has been fed by colonialism that denied rights and opportunities to many Muslims. In a Cold War, in which Muslim-majority countries were too often treated as proxies without regard to their own aspirations. In the middle of the Cold War, the United States played a role in the overthrow of a democratically elected Iranian government. And in his speech to the Ghanaian parliament, he says, Yes, a colonial map that made little sense helped to breed conflict. The West has often approached Africa as a patron or a source of resources rather than a partner. What is the effect of this? Obama criticizes his own rank and file. It might make it easier for his opponents to accept the rest of his message. They might be more willing to listen. Also, people criticizing their own rank and file transcend their own rank and file. Obama thus dares to criticize his own supporters, but he also empathizes with them. They have good reasons for their anger and behavior. Take the history of African Americans. Legalized discrimination, where blacks were prevented, often through violence, from owning property, or loans were not granted to African American business owners, or black homeowners could not access FHA mortgages, or blacks were excluded from unions, or the police force, or the fire department. Progressive and secular Americans often make very blunt remarks about religion. While this is obviously not very constructive, it's understandable. In the 2004 Senate race, Obama was running against the religious Republican, Alan Keyes. And in fact, towards the end of the campaign, Mr. Keyes uh, announced to the people of Illinois that, quote, Jesus Christ would not vote for Barack Obama. Jesus Christ would not vote for Barack Obama. Christ would not vote for Barack Obama because Barack Obama has behaved in a way that is inconceivable for Christ to have behaved. Such blunt remarks obviously provoke a response. In this particular case, it takes the form of a strong aversion to religion. America is often involved in large-scale foreign military action. There are several reasons for this. But let us be clear. Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 people on that day. The victims were innocent men, women, and children from America and many other nations who had done nothing to harm anybody. Where there is tension, Obama is willing to criticize his own supporters. In a speech on religion, for example, he is willing to criticize secular America. However, religious Americans should not automatically assume that he is on their side, as he also empathizes with the attitudes of secular Americans. What effect does this have? Obama comes across as being supportive of everyone, but beholden to no one. He transcends all differences.